Hi, this is Allison Sheridan of the NoSilicast podcast, hosted at podfeed.com, a technology geek podcast with an ever so slight Apple bias. Today is Sunday, June 16th, 2024, and this is show number 997. I would like to register a complaint right now with the live chat room. I know they have a lot of responsibilities like asking for roll call, reminding me to do chapter marks and to save, and reminding me and Steve to count the chapter marks at the end of the show to make sure I don't forget any of them. But they're also supposed to catch me if I say something obviously incorrect. So imagine my dismay when Kiwi Graham, who wasn't even there on Sunday, so he wasn't responsible for it that week, had to be the one to tell me on Monday that I introduced the show as number 966, not 996. Now, he noticed that sounded wrong because it was way farther away from a 1,000 than he was expecting. Now, this was not his job, and I, I expect the live audience to do better, okay? Now, your punishment is that there will not be a live show on June 30th. Well, t- technically, there isn't a live show because we're going to be on vacation on, on uh, June 30th with our kids, but uh, I just thought that'd be a good way to you know, really put the fear into you. Anyway, we will be here on the 23rd, so a week from now, so you will have a chance to redeem yourselves. Well, the MaxDoc conference is coming up really soon. It's going to be July 12th to 14th in Woodstock, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. It's so much fun. And if you get, attend, you'll get to see me, Jill from the North Woods, and Marty Gentius that you've, all, you've heard on the show. They're all going to be speaking at MaxDoc. Now, Friday the 12th is workshop day, which is, you know, something you can choose to go to or not. And that's where people like me will be giving hands-on instructions on how to do really cool things. Saturday and Sunday, or the 13th and 14th, are the regular show presentations. You can buy a one-day pass, a weekend pass, or all three days, which, of course, that's what you want to do. I love Backstock, and I hope to have as big or bigger of a showing of Nocilla Castaways at this year's show. We represent there, let me tell you, we are a significant percentage of the audience, so that's really fun. If you can come, use coupon code PODFEE, all caps, to get $30 off. I get $30 off, too, if you use the coupon, but the main thing is I want you to come. I want you to be there, come up, hang out. It's going to be great. Follow the link in the show notes to Max.Conference and Expo to check out all of the speakers. See you there. Now, we've got a great show today with an article by me, an interview with Brava from CSUN's Assistive Tech Conference that's really, really for everybody. It's not just an assistive device. Got a tiny tip by physics nerds Graham, who you're going to be hearing a lot of from uh, him in the upcoming weeks. Anyway, he's going to be talking about password sharing with Keychain. And then there's a terrific conversation between me and Adam Angst of Tidbits about WWDC. Now, we had a strict agenda that we did not follow at all. And I assure you, you're going to hear things you haven't heard on other coverage of WWDC. I'm a big fan of the giant screen in Teslas, especially because of how they display navigation. In the Model S and X, the screen is vertical, while in the Model 3 and Y that Steve and I own, the screen is in landscape orientation. On the left side, you get a visualization of the vehicles. You can also see traffic lights. I mean, it actually shows you whether it's green, yellow, or red. You can see pedestrians and even things like trash cans along the side of the road or those orange cones. When I turn on my turn signal, the rear-facing camera on on that side shows me the -the over-the-shoulder view, so I don't hit a bicycle on the right or a car on the left. The right two-thirds of the screen is almost all navigation, and it's really good-looking with lots and lots of detail. But everyone else on the planet who has experienced CarPlay says that it's amazing. We've rented quite a few cars with CarPlay, and while I didn't favorite it at first, it's kind of growing on me. The audio turn-by-turn directions are great. Some of my favorites include, not at this light, but at the next one, turn left. Or maybe take the right two lanes to exit north on the 405. However, the Tesla navigation gives much better situational awareness on the map. It's not just that the screen is giant, it also chooses a zoom level that makes sense for not just seeing the next block or two, but where you're going miles ahead. You always get more information on the Tesla screen than you do on a CarPlay screen. Now, CarPlay has so darn much clutter with their cartoony graphics that I'm always frustrated with not being able to see that big picture. Now, I know with fancier cars than the ones I rent, there are touchscreens so you can pinch and zoom, but on rental cars, it's super annoying to use the buttons and knobs to get to zoom in and zoom out mode. Again, the graphics are coarse, so they don't give the detail I get on the Tesla. But on CarPlay, my Apple Watch is in the game, so if a turn is coming up and I'm not watching the map closely, my watch will give me the little gentle taps to tell me to turn. 
I know that a left turn and right turn are supposed to be a different rhythm of taps, but I have never gotten the hang of knowing which one is which. It's easy enough to glance at the screen when I feel the tap, though, to see which way I'm supposed to go. Listening to podcasts with the Tesla audio system is trivially easy. I set up a playlist on my iPhone, and if Bluetooth hasn't connected to Steve's phone instead of mine that day, I hit play and the audio comes out of the car's speakers. I can use the scroll wheels on the steering wheel to jump forward and back in a show. I can stop altogether and change the volume, all without messing with the touchscreen. Now, I even know how to skip to the next podcast ever since I did that full-on de detailed review of everything Overcast can do. I can also see what podcast is playing at the bottom of the left side of the screen. With CarPlay, though, you can directly access your podcatcher of choice, or at least Apple Podcasts or Overcast, without even looking at your phone. You can use the screen to navigate the podcatcher's interface and choose different shows and episodes. But I don't really want to do that kind of thing while I'm driving. When Steve is driving the rental car and I'm the passenger, it is a pretty cool way for me to be able to make the changes while he keeps his eyes safely on the road in front of us. The best part of CarPlay and audio is how it's intelligent about what to do when audio is playing, but audio navigation instructions also need to be heard. If you're playing music, it automatically ducks the music down while the navigation is read and then brings the music back up when it's done. But if you're listening to a podcast, it stops the audio while navigation is being played and then starts back up where it left off. That's genius. It's the best of both worlds. Sadly, in the Tesla, the audio of the podcast or music just keep on playing while navigation is being said out loud. The Tesla system doesn't really know anything, but hey, I'm connected to Bluetooth. Good to go. You can see I'm conflicted on which one I like better. But after owning my car for four years, I realized I can have the best of both worlds. The other day I was going to meet a friend for lunch and I was about a half hour away in an unfamiliar location. My iPhone offered to start directions for me because it saw the event in my calendar. I wanted to share my ETA with my friend in case I ran into traffic, so I told Maps, knock itself up, do the navigation for me. Then in the Tesla map interface, I typed in the address using the on-screen keyboard to start my navigation. I started my podcast, and as expected, the show started playing through Bluetooth to my car. But what surprised me was that the audio navigation instructions came through from the iPhone over Bluetooth too. Now, I, I had the audio uh, navigation turned off on the, pod, on, the, uh, on the Tesla, so it was actually coming from my phone. And you know how I was jealous that CarPlay pauses podcasts when it needs to give driving instructions? Since this was the iPhone itself that's controlling that in CarPlay, not the head unit in the car, the same thing happens in my Tesla. It was awesome. I'm sure someone is yelling into the phone right now that I'm missing out on one big problem, that the two nav systems could choose different routes and things could get confusing. You're right, that could happen, and it did on my drive. On my way to lunch, the iPhone told me I could cut three minutes off my drive time if I took Catella. I had no idea when Catella was coming up or what I would do if, it didn't, if I didn't take Catella, so I just kept following the Tesla screen. I didn't want to look down at my phone, which is on a charging pad below the big screen, so I simply ignored the confirmation request. Turns out Tesla Nev took Catella anyway, so I never had to decide between the routes. I think in general, if the two are in disagreement, I'm going to do what the Tesla tells me to do just because that's the one I can see, not because it's necessarily better or worse. On my way home from my lunch date, there were several options for where to get off the freeway, but none of them, and none of them are necessarily wrong. The two systems suggested different paths, so I just took the one I normally prefer, and I'm pretty sure it was less efficient because it turned out to be under construction, and it was the one neither of them had suggested I take. But here's the thing. I'm really not in that much of a hurry when I'm driving. I've learned in my 50 years of driving that rushing about doesn't actually get you all there all that much sooner, and it's a lot of stress to worry about making every light and getting ahead of the other cars. I'm a mellower driver than I was when I'm younger, so if it takes me five minutes longer to get somewhere, I don't lose my mind. The bottom line is that I've thought all along that I had to decide between my two available navigation systems, but I now, now know and realize I have the best of both worlds. I have the best parts of CarPlay, plus the best parts of the Tesla navigation. I'm with Travis Ria at the Brava booth, and you have an interesting, I'm going to call it an oven. Is that a correct description? It's an oven that's not actually an oven. Yeah, it does a lot more than an oven. It can act like an oven, but it does so much more. 
the Brava was built, it cooks with infrared lights. So these lights were originally designed for the solar industry. They're very powerful. They can melt metal in a matter of seconds. They go from ambient to full power in less than one second. So Brava is powerful enough to sear steaks, but also gentle and controllable enough to poach eggs. It also gives you three independent cooking zones within the chamber itself, so you can cook. So he's holding a, a what looks like a cookie sheet, and it says one, two, three on it. Yeah, so there's three different zones, and you can cook up to three different ingredients at the same time on the same tray with totally different levels of doneness, i.e. Oh, wow. like a steak with potatoes and asparagus, or a steak with broccoli and cauliflower. Wait, we've got 8,500 recipe programs underneath the hood, and because we're powered by software and connect to Wi-Fi, it gets better every week. We push new recipes to it every Tuesday, and about once a month we do software updates. So what we're so I'm looking at something that's about the size of maybe a color laser printer is that's where exactly I've described it. the size, and it's got a, a handle on the front, and we've got some uh, light up buttons on top, and a big green uh, circular light might might mean go. I'm going to show you the reheat function here. So we have a camera that you can see that turns on right there that you'll be able to monitor everything from the app. So that since it's got an opaque uh, front, since it's infrared light, you don't want all that leaking out, I guess. Originally, yes, but uh, we actually launched in August of last year a version with a glass door. Oh. So that you can see the light show that's going on inside. Okay, that's kind of crazy. So the one we're looking at has a, a, a display on the top showing us that it's cooking. That's correct. Okay. They, all, they all have the camera. Um, even the version that has the door. So you said it, it doesn't take time to heat up? No, no, no preheat is required. At Wait, all. You but can that's a, probably going to save energy, isn't it? A lot of energy. You can cook a whole meal in Brava in less time and with less energy than it takes to preheat your regular oven. Well, I know our oven takes forever to preheat, so that, <laughs> that wasn't that high of a bar to step over, but I get your point, yeah. Yeah, it stays cool to the touch. Um, and again, we're doing software updates all the time, so there, what it is today will be very different than what it will be in three months. We're working on some other assistive technology features like voice to text so that the blind and people with low vision will be able to cook really for the first time safely and independently. Now you mentioned before we started rolling uh, digital bits here that uh, you had some feedback from people uh, working with people with autism? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, we originally we didn't originally design Brava for the assistive technology community. We launched it in 2018 and it wasn't until the middle of 2023 that we started seeing some orders coming in from a couple of places in Massachusetts that were helping people with intellectual disabilities. And so we got on the phone with them, asked, what, what's going on? How are you doing this? They told us, and we trained all of their physical therapists and occupational therapists, and we started seeing orders coming in that we spread the word out in Massachusetts, and now we're here trying to learn from the community so that we can make Brava just more powerful and better for the assistive tech user. Wait a minute, you want to learn from the community instead of assuming that you know better? That's weird. Yeah, yeah, we, we <laughs> yes. <laughs> Caught him off guard there. So if you uh, stop this for a second, can you show us what a, what, like what a recipe looks like, how you how you get into that? Oh, absolutely. So again, we've got a display that's across most of the, the top of the device here. So there's a lot of ways that you can find things. We can go into the cook feature, which gives you all of our basic categories like chicken, beef, pork, eggs, frozen foods. All right, I want to make a poached egg. Okay. Easy enough. So he tapped on eggs. Oh, I got fried. Oh, no, maybe I want a frittata. Oh, we're talking. Okay, poached eggs, fine. So you can tell it anywhere from one to four eggs, and it's going to have the touch screen is going to show you where to place them on the tray. So they've got a specialized uh, egg tray that's got four big pockets, and you just drop the eggs in there, and then you tell it which ones. Okay. This is your personalization slider, so that if you want it to be a little more or a little less done than the default setting, you can do that, and it will save that feature for you. Can I cook the three eggs differently? You could, but it would require some manual... Messing around. Okay, messing not around. using this. Okay. Um, right here is your screen that's telling you which shelf to put it on because there's two shelves and lower and an upper. And then last is sort of like your prepare to launch screen. It gives you all of your selections that you've made. What's really cool is that within about three months, all of this that I did on the touch screen, you'll be able to do on our mobile app so that you people that with low blind or low vision and blindness won't have to use the touch screen at all. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, the other thing you mentioned uh, earlier on is that it can sear steak. How, how does that work? I thought, does this cook from above and below? How does it work? It does. It cooks from above and below using the lamps that were originally designed for the solar industry. So like I said, they go from ambient to full power in less than a second. And at full power, they're over 4,000 degrees at the core of the bulb. But what we're really cooking with here is light energy. 
uh, we're using a little bit of conduction when we hit it from the bottom, but when we hit it from the top with the lamp, that energy is going directly into the food rather than spending the energy trying to heat the chamber itself. So that's where we get a lot of the efficiency and the power that you could never get in a regular oven or even on a stovetop. And to sear, you said you you just shoot up the, from the bottom, right? That's correct. But you also have a glass tray, which lets you shoot from the top and the bottom at the same time. That's correct. And the glass tray is really unique because it acts more of like a true heat sink. With the metal tray, I get the benefit of conduction across the whole tray. With the glass tray, it really keeps things unique in their zone. So I can do something like a seared salmon with super crispy skin right next to cherry tomatoes that are barely bursting. Oh, wow. And so if you tried to do that same cook on the metal tray here, it wouldn't work. So I started to stick my hand in there just to, to point at the lights for Steve's video, and it's hot in there. It gets warm. Yeah, it, it's warm. I mean, would it have burned my finger if I touched the light bulb? Absolutely. Okay. Don't do that. Okay, so don't ever stick your hand in. Assume it's like an oven and hot inside. It is like an oven. It does. God, it was hot. magic, and it, it never got hot. Well, it, it, no, it does get hot inside, because we are cooking. Yeah. We are generating heat. It's just that radiant heat is not the main method of cooking that we're using there. Gotcha, gotcha. So now Brava is uh, actually available today then? Yeah, yeah. We've and been around since 2018. Where, uh, what would be the price point on this? It starts at $1,295. Okay, all right. And uh, energy costs, that's about a month and a half of savings. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. Maybe not that bad, but soon. Here's the trick. We, we tell people, you will end up cooking at home so much more than you were before because we make it faster, easier, and more convenient. And so I think in a matter of months, it honestly pays for itself just by not even ordering takeout or going out to eat. Interesting. I like it. And uh, where would people go to find it? www.brava.com. B-R-A-V-A.com. Thank yeah. you very much. This Thank is you awesome. so much. Yeah, pleasure meeting you. In our Slack community over at podfeed.com slash Slack, before WWDC, there was a discussion about password management with Apple Keychain. And physics nerd Graham jumped into the discussion. He had a tiny tip on how to share passwords with family members using Keychain. Now, keep in mind, again, this discussion occurred right before WWDC when Apple announced that they're coming out with a standalone password app that will make this entire tip a little bit obsolete. However, there's still quite a while with the new OSs until, or until the new OSs ship, I should say, and maybe you're not even going to be interested in jumping in right away. So Graham and I thought this tiny tip would still be interesting. Here's a tiny tip on how to get a little bit more out of your built-in passwords app, even before Apple updates it. A bit of context first. I am the keeper of the keys for our family unit, so I'm in control of making our passwords unique and secure. My wife really appreciates having our banking secure, but finds managing it bothersome. We were on one password, which continues to be a superb market leading app. I moved via some experimentation to Proton Pass, which I still like, but its integration is not always there. Ultimately, I wanted to use Apple's offering to save money. My requirements were the ability to generate secure passwords easily, the ability to lock passwords, and the ability to share them. Apple's keychain is the best for ease of use for me and my wife, and I also know how to share passwords with her, hence this tiny tip. Since iOS 17.3, I've been able to go to Face ID and Passcode in Settings and enable Stolen Device Protection. One of its features is to protect passwords, so that I need to use Face ID to open them, not just my code to unlock the phone, which meets the second requirement, they are locked. So on to the tip. Let me make it clear, this only works within a family sharing group, not arbitrary friends or colleagues. If you have family sharing enabled, open up passwords in system settings on Mac or settings on iOS. At the top, there is a plus button. Clicking on it brings up two options, new password and new shared group. Click on new shared group to get a window where you can type a name and add people to it if you want to. With the new group alive, you have two options to populate it. The first is to go into the folder 
then click the plus button near the top and this gives two options. To either create a new password in this group or to move passwords to this group. The other option is to open up a password and you'll see a group field that can be changed to any of your groups. Now as a tiny tip bonus, if you want to just have groups for your own organization, you can follow this process and not invite anyone. I love this and I have about 10 groups, but only shared one of them with my wife. Tiny tip bonus extra, the Shortcuts app has an action called Show Passwords. I created a shortcut that has this action in it and assigned a keyboard shortcut to it, Command and Slash. I also placed it on my phone's home screen and this makes it super easy for me to get in and manage my passwords. With any luck, Apple will update and give us a separate app for passwords, but not everyone's going to be able to use that. And even if we can, anyone sensible is going to wait a little bit before we get access to it. Well, thanks so much for that, Graham. That was fantastic. Even if it is going to be Sherlock soon, it's still a valuable tip, and I like it. We're going to be hearing a lot more from Graham in the future. He's got a bunch of other cool stuff he wants to tell us about. You know who is awesome sauce? John Murray, that's who. Every quarter or so, he goes to podfeet.com slash PayPal, and he sends me a very generous donation to show his appreciation for the podcast. He just made a donation, and it really makes a difference. I hope if you find value in the content we create here, you'll consider being awesome sauce like John. Well, we've had another WWDC, and there's no one I like to, to, to talk to more about this kind of stuff than Adam Angst of Tidbits. Welcome back to the show, Adam. Thanks for having me. It's always fun. Well, one of the things I like to do is I look through tidbits and I say, what is Adam interested in talking about right now? Oh, here's an article. And now I know he, he'll be excited about talking about this subject, right? Oh, yeah. Now, let me tell you about all the stuff I didn't get to say or I have like I was writing too quickly. Oh. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I've got a link in the show notes to an article that you wrote about Dub Dub that was talking about the top 14 compelling features that you saw coming to Apple's operating system. And I want to use this opportunity to say all the stuff I didn't get to say when I hear other people talking about it on shows going, no, no, but what you need to understand, or, or but from my perspective. So the, the, Yeah, and, and of course, it's very important to note that it's exactly 14 because that's one of those SEO number. No, it's, it's entirely <laughs> random. I was just, I was writing and then at some point I'm like, okay, I got to cut this off. <laughs> well, I love it. I love it. Well, one of the things we were talking about before we started uh, recording was how fast this went, right? You were panicking oh. as you were trying to take notes. Oh, just impossible. And actually, uh, one thing I did was I, 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 I spun up Audio Hijack. I hadn't used it in a long time. I spun up Audio Hijack. It now has a transcribe function. And so because I wanted a transcript of everything Apple said because they go so fast. And I swear this was the fastest one ever because they need to leave time for the AI stuff at the end. And so I, I can and I can now prove this like from the transcript is like they would literally say a sentence about a feature and then move on completely. You're like, you just no Actually, ifs, ands, or buts. You should do more some more density just, metrics on that, right? How fast yeah. they spoke. And had to leave well, time I, for I, him I, flying from a, a plane or, or doing parkour and was, things like that, right? That was fun. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, I, I actually do, the, sort of the closest I have to density metrics is part of the reason why I wanted to, to get the transcripts, I wanted to feed it to some of the chat bots. Oh, and see okay. if they could summarize it for me in a useful way. And in fact, they couldn't because it was so tight already that there really weren't or too many that different subjects. Right. And so then what I did, um, which worked better in at least Claude, um, uh, was the only one that worked really well in, was I said, list out all the features that Apple talked about. Oh. Okay. And so I didn't try to summarize so much as extract, and it did better at that. Okay, uh, but but it was an interesting. It was just an interesting experiment. Um, yeah. Mostly, what I've done, honestly, is I've searched in the transcript on a word <laughs> and then found exactly what they said. I was I did almost the same thing. I used Notability to do it, and one of the things I like about Notability is as you're handwriting or you're typing, um, you can have it be recording the audio, and then you can tap in your notes, and it goes directly to where in the transcript they said the yeah. thing and plays it back for your ears. So you you get all three mediums all interconnected with the same timing. And it worked really well. 
Yeah, I, I honestly, I should do something along those lines. Um, I actually don't listen to a lot of stuff that I want to take notes on. Apple yeah. events are the exception. Yeah. And so I hadn't thought about this until like that morning. I'm like, huh, I wonder how one does this. Audio Hijack probably does it. And, there you you go. Know, and so I went up there. But yeah, but uh, notability would make more sense. Or as we'll probably get to, <laughs> Apple's own uh, oh, audio sure recording can. and transcription. We'll see how that works. When it chips. Yeah. You know, I, I was frustrated by the presentation because I was just so impatient to hear the AI stuff that I was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. You're going to do something in music. You're going to do something in notes. You're going to do something in, you know, pages, whatever they were going to talk about, whatever it was. I was like, yawn, tired of this, moving on. Come on, let's go, let's go. And I, I think mostly I was annoyed because I thought it was going to be an hour. And we're at like 45 yeah. minutes and we're just starting uh, Mac OS, I think, at that point. Or maybe it was quarter after or whatever. It, it was just, yeah. I was so worried they were just going to go. And then, you know, maybe some other time we'll do AI. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was, uh, I didn't quite know how to, what to expect in terms of how they I was pretty sure they were going to talk about the AI stuff. Um, I've somewhat given up on trying to predict how long Apple will go. <laughs> because... I forget which one of the last, uh, one of the most recent hardware announcements um, has been the, I forget what it, it was, the like iPad. 20 minutes. It was oh, like, yeah. It was just like, but like they got, they're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And then it ended. And I'm like, uh, right. Uh, okay. You're done. <laughs> I mean, it was <laughs> like, enough stuff, but it was like, well, 20 minutes, that's really a press announcement, didn't it? <laughs> and, and it felt like it could have been a little bit more because they do script these things still so tightly. Yeah. And you know, and because of their pre-recorded, so they're literally writing and, and reading a script. And yeah, I mean, you guess I have to give these people credit; they know their lines. Yeah, you know, I mean, well, or they, they, they are they are actors took the best cut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they know their, ed oh, gosh, their editors. How many times do they have to film it? How many times? Oh my god, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, especially with some high-level Apple executive who can't hit his lines. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir, but we have to try that again. I'm glad you said he, because the she's all hit their lines first time. Hey, well, one, one thing I wanted to just kind of focus into one pile together is the restrictions on what devices get to have the fun. Because yeah. it's it's not to depress people, but I don't want people learning about a cool feature and then, going, and then finding out later on they don't get it. So starting from the so, beginning, messages on over satellite, that's restricted to the iPhone 14 and above. Yes, and that is simply because it needs the appropriate radio capabilities okay. to talk to the satellites. Um, you know, there's 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 some magic in there, basically, which happens. I still think this feature is total magic. Um, <laughs> Might be electronics, and, but okay. <laughs> no, it's magic. What's that? I, so what's like, that oh, a freaking satellite <laughs> in space. Uh, well, uh, so yeah, so that's a big one. That has, has SOS over satellites? Has that been iPhone or the the, the way you could communicate yes. over satellite during SOS? That was it's iPhone exactly. The, it's exactly the same. Exactly the same requirement. So okay. it was, the first year it was emergency SOS via satellite. Okay. The second year it was roadside assistance via satellite, and now it's messages via satellite. With there's one other thing. I saw it's deep in the iOS 18 page. I think you're going to be able to. This was crazy. You're going to be able to do live photos and videos over satellite if the dispatchers enable it. So is the dispatcher the, the emergency person you're talking yeah. to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and so basically they need to say, you know, let you you say that your leg is broken off. Let me look at that. Let me you see know? a picture. Oh, and it's so just I, a sprain, you big baby. <laughs> <laughs> you can chew it off, right? A, well, so so but regular messages over satellite, is that only in an emergency? No. I I no, assumed anything. you could be like, hi, honey, yeah. I made it to the top of the mountain. Yep, you can. And okay. and that's, I was actually, I was surprised because I, the drum I've been beating for the last two years is this, this emergency SOS is fine. The roadside assistance is fine. But what I want is I'm out biking in the middle of nowhere, um, which in Ithaca means I'm 15 miles from my house, <laughs> 10, eight, 10 miles, 10 miles from my house. There's no connectivity. Um, and I get a flat tire. Okay. The way the way Come modern on, uh. bicycle biker, yeah, the way modern bikers deal with flat tires is with cell phones. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't bring patch kits any of that nonsense anymore. <laughs> um, so yeah, so basically, I wanted like, uh, Tanya, could you come get me? You know, that's what I wanted, and I figured, okay, that might be too much, but I wanted to have to be able to send my location via messages because you can do that, right? You can just say, "Here I am," 
Right. And it would be very easy to, with a spouse or, or friend or whatever, say, if you ever get a random location from me with nothing more, come get me. Yeah, that, that is that like is called that SOS. Means. Yeah, so right. you you are today able to mark your location by satellite. So yes, but they have to know to look for you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, but, but if Tanya doesn't hear from worthless. you for four hours, she's like, let me <laughs> let me just go see where he is. Hey, he hasn't he hasn't moved. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. you don't even know he hasn't moved. You just know where he was when he dropped that pin. At right, and I right. think it tells you the time. But it doesn't tell yeah. you he dropped it 28 times in the last four hours going, I'm here, I'm right. here, I'm here. Precisely. There was no notification to the other person. Yeah. And that, and as I said, and, and before, you know, I'm like, oh, I get it. This is magic that you can do it at all. It's amazing. But can we have this one additional thing? Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be sufficient. And so Apple totally leapfrogged that. And it's like, oh, yeah, you have full messages. Mm -hmm. And, and oh, and oh, you're going to be able to do video and photos if, you know, the emergency people care. You know, like, okay. Ah, my head's blowing. I didn't think that was technically possible, but that's, apparently that's they've fantastic. got just some incredible compression and stuff to deal with. It. Maybe it's, uh, you know, imagine they're looking for you. They know you have a broken leg. They're not doubting the broken leg, but they're like, we can't find you. Can, can you take some pictures of your surroundings? You see anything yeah. in your view that we can hone in yep. on? Um, that could be too. Um, yeah. So there's all sorts of possibilities there, but I think this is, you know, again, this is not one of those features I expect people will be using every day. But boy, when you need it, you need it. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Um, and, and, and in fact, like my, my big question is, what if, what if you're communicating with someone else who's also out of touch? I think that should be possible. But here's the trick, mm. which I think is that both of you will have to know to be like, it won't just come in. You'll have to know to be pointing at the satellite. Oh, right, 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 right. Because to, to do the SOS the location, you have to point at the satellite to get it. Yeah, which I love. I just love the concept that you can. <laughs> well, that was at 1026. And she's back at 1042. What the? It, it started breaking up and then all of a sudden Zoom was just like, yeah, I'm out. Huh? <laughs> Not done here. 1042. Um, yeah, um, we were enjoying being out in the mountains uh, with some friends and, and it'll say, hey, satellite's coming soon. Get ready, get ready. Okay, now start pointing around and try to find it. And so it definitely is. You are pointing at the satellite. So, yeah, yeah, that is, I, this, is a little this, bit this tricky. fabulous memory of um, back in... 1994, we'd gone on a hike with this guy named Corey Lowe, who was, he rewrote the internet starter kit for me for Windows. So mm -hmm. he was, he was a Windows guy, a friend in Seattle. And we went for a hike. And at some point he wanted to get cell service and he was kind of literally running around, like waving his phone around. And so, and every time I use a, or, you know, even test or think about it, SOS for satellite, you uh, think like, about him doing I just, I just have this, this image of my friend Corey, like pointing his phone at the sky, trying to get cellular service. Uh, but now you can point at your sky and get satellite service. So it's crazy how far we've come. Yeah. So, so before we started, we were discussing how long we're going to go. We're on the first bullet. Uh, but, but I'm still going to add one more thing. Uh, for people who don't realize what uh, an expense saving this can be to have this, it, not just to have this service, but also uh, a friend of mine has a satellite radio for when he goes off in the middle of nowhere and they have to pay 20 bucks a month to maintain it. And when he's gone, they pay 40 bucks so he can actually send more messages. And it's basically, yeah. he could just send, squirt out a couple of sentences, you know, every few hours to say he's still alive to his wife. So, I mean, the real question here, so Apple announced last year that they were extending the free period for um, the satellite capabilities through November of 2025. And so the real question is, is do they ever figure out a business model for this? Right. Or decide, can they afford to do it? Does it make you buy the and new phone, you know? As I said, I just don't know. I mean, and that's, and that's, I, you know, in some ways we're actually a little closer to an idea now, because if you think about it, um, maybe this whole messages via satellite thing becomes a paid service. 
and the, everyone gets emergency and roadside and whatnot because it's just so hard to charge for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, do you want me to rescue you? Is it how much is it worth to you? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, so that's going to be tough. But but the but the messages via satellite. Maybe this is the year of like um, teasing the feature. Oh, yeah, actually, I really do find that useful feature. I will pay you an extra five bucks a month for you know my iCloud Plus account. If it was any other company, I would bet that would uh, might happen. But being Apple, I, I don't know. It just doesn't smell like it. It smells yeah, more like they, they may just have enough money in. to do it. Well, and yeah. to to get their thirty eight percent margins or whatever on their devices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all yeah, right. Yeah, bullet precisely. number two. So all these cool <laughs> Apple intelligence things, the AI that they built into the phone, and the uh, uh, special offsite service for their own data center and getting free access to chat GPT 4.0, who, what devices actually get to do this? So again, pretty limited. Um, iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max, which I believe have an A16 Pro, A7, I can never remember. A17, the A I think it is. A17 Pro, yeah. yeah. Um, and then an iPad or a Mac with an M series, any M series. So M1 any Apple up. Silicon. Right. And... I actually saw something which suggests that it's not so much the processing because really is the A17 Pro so much better than the A16 Pro, for instance, mm -hmm. um, but amount of RAM. That's what I heard too. Yeah, it needs eight. And, they, and people are surmising eight gigabytes of RAM is what's required. So the, the iPhone 15 with no Pro on the end of it doesn't yeah. have eight gigabytes of RAM. Precisely. Even though it's got the same, and, essentially the same processor. Yeah, so that that feels to me like the you know what's going on there, and it's absolutely the case that this you know these these language large language models um, and you know diffusion models really do require a lot of memory. Okay, so you know so that's that's a big deal there. It, I mean, it, it's sort of funny because on, in, in many ways on the Mac side, easy, right? At this point, at this point we can we can we can we can say everyone's got an Apple Silicon Mac. Not true, but <laughs> right. but, but it's certainly. You, you, it's, it's been out for four years, right? Right. You know, right. just about. So you've got you've got plenty of time to have had an Apple Silicon Mac. And you might have an expectation had, that you were starting to get left behind. Right. Right. I mean, right. I'm sitting here looking at my 27 inch iMac from 2020, going, "Yep, that's just the writing's on the wall, boys. <laughs> you know, you're, you got some time here, but Bye -bye, not much." Sweetie. <laughs> Yeah. And, um, and cause that was honestly nothing, you know, before then I was like, yeah, I just don't really have any good excuses for buying a new Mac right now. Right. And I have an M I have an M one MacBook air, my other machine. So, um, iPads though, you know, eh, we've had a couple of years of M series, but my experience is that people upgrade their iPads much less frequently sure, sure. and, and are much less likely to have bought the M series like iPad pros. So the two that are left out expensive. that they just made a big, you know, they talked about was the 10th gen iPad, nothing for what yep. it's like 369 or something like that. I was, I was recommending that to people, but as of to, of last week, uh, I'm not going to recommend it anymore. This week, because it definitely hmm. can't uh -huh. do it, right? I'm, I'm, it can't do it. There's no question about that. Um, when I'm trying to visualize, I'm literally writing my my Apple intelligence article. I was doing that before we started talking. Um, I'm what I'm trying to internalize is if you're the 10th gen iPad, you know, core customer, mm -hmm. do you care? So like you're, you know, you get it for your 10 year old to play games on and watch videos on and whatnot. Yeah, they don't need Apple intelligence, probably. Um, the one thing that just stands out, maybe it's just the thing I care about the most, is being able to edit photos and say, take this garbage can out of the background. Yeah. You think most, normal people, most people do don't. that? Most people don't. Most people, most, but anyway, normal people definitely don't do it now. The question is, is will they want to do it? But I don't think most people edit photos in the slightest. Oh, come on. I don't think they so take, much as hit. Take I don't Uncle think they so Fred much as out of the photo. Bomb. You don't think people want to have always wanted to do that? Oh, they've they wanted to, but the amount of time that they spend doing it is yeah. next to nil. Um, and so can't. I don't think they'll start. Because they hmm? can't easily do it. Oh, I know. But, but I'm saying, but I, but I don't think, I, I, mean, I, I don't think it comes up so often. Okay. That you're like, oh yeah, I want to, this is something I need to have. I mean, may, I said, maybe you're different than like, I edit photos very infrequently. Yeah. Um, at, you know, I just don't do it. I take them, they look great, done, move on. 
Um, so and you again, live, also don't you look live at my photos later. within 10 miles of no cell service. When I wa I go on walks every day, long walks, I don't know, seven or eight miles a day, and I cannot take a photo that doesn't have a power line in it. There, there aren't any. I've just kind of embraced my photography is often in, in, with a hashtag urban beauty. Right. So I just like, <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure if there is a garbage can, get it in the photo, you know? Right. Um, yeah. No, it's, it's not to say that people won't like it, but I'm, I'm, I do feel like it may be one of those things where you're like, yeah, it's a cheap iPad. You know, yeah. you don't get the, you don't get all the good stuff with a cheap iPad. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, so the iPad, the uh, iPad, nothing is out. The iPad mini is three years old. Not a big shock that that one's out. Uh, later, the yeah. iPhone 15 is the one that that one leaves a mark. You know, it's like, yeah. I just bought it. It's not even a year old. You're telling me that's obsolete. That's, yep. that's rough. Yep. That's really. And, and, and as we know, the iPhone pros, like, well, it'll be questioned with a 16, right? With a 16, it feels like Apple's going to have to make it oh, got enough it. memory in the 16, right? They've got it. Um, they have to. That because just because if, if you had to go to the, the 16 pro, I mean, the pro iPhones are stupid expensive. Yeah. I mean. I, 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 I suffer with the iPhone 15 Pro and I'm like, ah, man, do I need it? Every year I get the Pro and I'm like, ah, man, do I really need the Pro? And it's always like I want a slightly better camera. I think it would be too to like, hard to explain to people that yeah, how come yeah. I've got the iPhone 15 and she's got the iPhone, what looks like an iPhone 15 to me and she can do all the stuff I can't do. Um, well, I mean, that could, that could be the answer, basically, that, basically that, that every new Apple product to come out will be Apple Intelligence compatible. It, so it the 11th been. gen iPad, the next iPad mini, the next iPhones. Yeah. Because that it, it would kind of make sense, honestly. Yeah. So uh, you brought up a good question in your article. Uh, by the way, we are still on bullet two. Um, you brought up a good <laughs> question in your article of, of what about the HomePod? And the, the great oh. joy of the S lady not being an idiot is so strong. I mean, that's something everybody cares about, I think. Oh, oh, yeah. Having the HomePod over there answering the wrong question will, I mean, do we just disable the S lady on our HomePods? They, I've heard nothing about this, What I'm hoping, and maybe, no, the HomePods become useless without the S lady. I mean, you know, that's how, because how we control our home. Um, you know, yeah. we turn yeah. lights on and off mostly. Well, I was and hoping so, she would stop telling me someone of my, one of your devices hasn't responded. Oh, which yeah, one, funny. you fool? <laughs> I want to know which one. A, Why would you not tell me which one? It is no use to me to know that one of them didn't. It's like, guess. And the, then I have to go through the whole map and try to figure out which one is not responding. Yeah. And reboot it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get that. I get that non-trivially often. Um, the, uh, my hope know. is. Okay. My hope is that HomePods will use private compute, cloud compute. Right? Okay. So they would go off-site for their information. They'll mm. go offside. They have to be connected. Mm. You're already doing. Yeah, I mean, you're all. I mean, they. You know, we know we don't have that. I mean, let that's that actually could be, and we don't know this. But I mean, let's face it. Apple's going to be rolling this stuff out slowly. Um, they were very clear about how this is over, like over the course of the next year. We're not going to see all this stuff in September, October. We're not going to see it all in January. We're not oh, going to see it, it all now. Yeah, yeah, of course you do. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not my understanding is not out. It's entirely not out right now. Um, mm -hmm. And even in the beta. So that's the kind of thing where we've got to wait until we get uh, we get to what March, April, that last real point feature release. Mm -hmm. They're going to be coming until then is my, my belief. So, um, so if, if they so can here's go what I'm off site though. for HomePod, why can't they go off site for the 15? Well, that's what I'm. That's for exactly where I was going with that. Which is, I'll bet that as they, I mean, let's say private, private cloud computers completely new. They have no idea how it's going to have to be scaled, etc. So what the usage is going to be like, all that sort of thing. My bet is, is that they open up some of these features to older devices um, mm -hmm. through pro you know, older it. devices or devices that, that, like the HomePod, just makes sense. The Apple mm -hmm. TVs, you know, where you really want Siri to be not so stupid, sorry. Um, and <laughs> I mean, I mean, trying not to trigger everything. Um, you want to not be so stupid, and but you're never gonna get enough compute there. And so that's right. where it makes sense to me to go out to private cloud okay. compute. I like that. For the HomePods, for the Apple TVs, possibly for the Apple Watch. Um, huh. you know, so they didn't have um, to promise that now. They can have that in their back right. pocket as a solution. I like it. I'm I, mean, I mean, keep in mind, this is a 1.0. 
we've got they they had to ship some stuff and they didn't yeah. want to overpromise. Um, and so the last thing they want to do is say, oh, all the all devices can use it and find out that it truly sucks on you know an original HomePod. Um, so you know, bring that in later as right. a way of uh, keeping people happy after the fact. I, I'm hoping. I don't yeah, that, no, that's a good theory. I like that. Well, the last restriction thing um, that I read about in your article was uh, one of the things I'm excited about, and I don't know why anybody but somebody like me is excited, is iPhone mirroring onto your screen where you can interact with your phone from your yeah. from your Mac. Um, I love it because that's going to be a boon to doing video screencasting. That's going to be just fabulous. We use a lot of specialized tools. A tool called Bezel just got... Uh, uh, Sherlock done that one. Um, but it require you said it requires Apple Silicon or Intel with a T2 chip. So that's yeah, good. Uh, it, it, and it does. And my wife's actually quite interested in this feature too um, because she often doesn't have her phone like around her. Yeah, she's one of those people. <laughs> it doesn't like, have know, it constantly connected to her hand. You know how she does is. not have a constantly, that's what she has the watch for. Okay. And so, but... But as a result, yeah, there are things where she's like, yeah, I have no idea where my phone is. I mean, she's using the watch to find the phone repeatedly. Yeah. And so. Oh, okay. That, I, that, I, that I can understand. I do that all the time. Yeah. And so, but if she could then bring up her phone on mm -hmm. her Mac's screen, because it'll be in the house somewhere. I mean, it's, sure. it's just more that she wants to be able to see, you know, and, and there's, there's a few things like our big one actually is checking the weather because we use Carrot. Oh, um, okay. You know, okay. you want to check, use your weather app which you just do on the iPhone. That's what you use the iPhone for, checking the weather. Um, and yeah, there are weather apps on the Mac, but it's not what we use them for. So, uh, so the, that could be the kind of thing where it's just, you, pull, you pull that up and, uh, in, in your window. So I think it'll be interesting to see how many people use this. But, uh, but yes, and, and the T2 chip makes sense to me because you do not want to be doing iPhone stuff over insecure um, connections because you'd have to be like putting in passcodes and sure. things like that. And sure. so if you don't have a T2 chip, there's going to be some level of uh, encryption that's not possible. Right. But, th but that extends back a lot of years now. So I was, I was kind of yeah. happy. Yeah, that you got one no, was... no excuse. No, it was, it was mostly <laughs> interesting. They go back, they, the Sequoia supports any Mac before the T2 chip, which it does. You mean up to the T2 chip? Yeah. There's a few, there's a few that are still supported. Um, oh, okay. Uh, like the iMac Pro, uh, the 2017 mm. iMac. Okay, uh, I still seen supported the, the list. Yeah, you scroll down on the app, that Mac OS Sequoia preview, it gives you the full list. Okay, um, well, that's good. But uh, um, interestingly, MacBook Pros back to 2018, but MacBook Airs only to 2020. Yeah, the um, MacBook Airs are so. just a little shorter. I think that I, I think they skipped us some time. I don't quite have my I don't quite have the whole lineup in my head in terms of when the different MacBook Airs came out because I was ignoring them heavily during the butterfly keyboard era. Sounds like I need to do another one of my world famous diagrams. I've been uh, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of them lately, like to try to explain how the Apple Pencil, which Apple <clears throat> pencils yeah. go with which devices. I have to keep redoing that graph, but this might be a good one to show, like where do you where do you get uh, the AI stuff and where do you not and where do you? Eh, I got another diagram. This can be fun. Hey, let's let's jump to uh, talk about the passwords app. And one of the things I want to ask you about in your experience with getting people to use a password manager is that the people don't want to do it because it sounds too hard or because they don't trust the cloud. Would, would, would anecdotally, do you oh, have... I think it's mostly it's too hard. Yeah, that's kind of um, what I thought. Too hard, and I don't know if they quite get there immediately, but then they don't want to pay for it. Yeah, you know, it, I yeah. mean, most of the good password managers are not free. Sure. Um, so, so I, I, I don't get a. I mean, yeah, there are other people who don't, you know, who who are perturbed by the cloud. But usually, when that happens, I kind of explain, you know, how the encryption works, and you know, it's get them over you, the hump. They, they I'll get use them over it the hump if you stop that, yeah. telling me about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so there's a public key and a private key. <laughs> Sally and Joe, um, I think about my father-in-law. He's really, really, really security conscious, and it, and he's great. I mean, anything comes up on screen he doesn't understand. He he like let's go with the keyboard, and he calls us, and he always apologizes for bothering us. But like, no, you're nailing this. This is this is perfect. You know, just always call us. That's great. You see a winner? No, no, that one's okay. That one's okay. So far, nothing bad has come up, but. Uh, he says, well, you know, I would never put anything in the cloud. And I said, well, so when you go online and pull down all your stock values from your, you know, from your investment company right. and you log in, did you know that's the cloud? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're on the cloud no, all the time. I, that's, that's part of it. Is I, I mean, I don't have, I, I don't want to quite say sympathy because that's not quite, that's overstating the case, but there's a level of, okay, you just got to get over it at this point. You know, like <laughs> the world is online, um, you know, whether you call it the cloud, or you call it the Internet or whatever you do, you know, standalone machines basically don't exist anymore. Right. Right. One, yes. of, the, one of the things um, in thinking about password managers, I have a great love for one password and my first instinct was to say, yeah, but it can't do all the stuff one password does. And that's absolutely, I believe, to be true. Uh, a couple of things yes. I wrote down: uh, Watchtower with the Have I Been Pwned database. You you know whether your your site has been uh, uh, compromised. Uh, actually, passwords has that. Does it? Okay. Um, yeah. Credit cards, SSH keys, bank accounts, databases, email accounts, passports. Yeah. Passports actually helped us. Steve had his uh, backpack stolen in Peru. And we were able to give a printout of his previous passport to the passport office, which helped a little bit. I mean, probably could have gotten out of the country yeah. without it. But uh, API credentials, reward programs, medical records, you know, it's just got a lot of different ways you can store information. And I use a fair number of those. So there's two things which um, – so I wrote a big article about this um, mm -hmm. because Apple, uh, back in July of last year – updated the iCloud Passwords Chrome extension to be Sonoma compatible. Hmm. Previously, iCloud Passwords had been the Chrome extension and were only compatible for win with Windows. And so the idea was it, was it would solve your problem if you were a Windows user, uh, you know, you had to use your iCloud, sure. iCloud, stuff, iCloud passwords under Windows. But by making it compatible with um, Chrome and, on, uh, on Sonoma, it opens it up to Chrome and Arc and Brave and Edge, Edge and, and all of those. So Chromium. Precisely Opera. And, yeah, that works, which is great. So, okay, so I actually spent a couple months using this. And the, the two things that you miss from one password um, when you do this is credit cards and autofill of addresses. Now, the reason why you miss those is because in Safari, you get that. Like oh. Safari does it separately. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, that's not part so of one password. It's not, um, right. It's not, well, right. It could be. Well, but... it doesn't. It, it is part of one password, but it's not part of the password. The password stuff doesn't have to do it because Safari knows those two things. But I thought and Safari so, knew it because of your my card. You know, this is my contact card. Has that been coming from one password uh, all this time? No, no, no. You're 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 correct. That's why okay. Safari knows it. Yeah. But my point is, is one password also knows it. Okay. Um, but remember, if you're using Chrome, you don't have access yeah, to the my stuff. card stuff. Right. Right. So, so what I spent a great deal of time figuring out for this article was. How you can turn on, because of course, all the browsers can remember credit cards, can remember addresses mm -hmm. internally. And so I, I figured out basically how to use Apple's passwords and the browser's credit card and, um, and address autofill. So it's, it's a little bit tricky. To, it's that's tricky a matter to of trust out. to do that one. I mean, it, I mean, come on, credit cards, credit cards get stolen so many, so often anyway. Um, I mean, it's just a pain when it happens and, and the likelihood that Google's going to get hacked is actually way lower than you're going to get, you know, it's going to get True. skimmed by a restaurant. I mean, just Google, True, Google's not but you're, but you're also trusting Google to trust Google not to play with it, but Google's not going to mess with that. Google wants to sell you stuff there. There's no, there's no security problems with Google. Uh, Google, Google is the biggest target in the world. Yeah. Um, they're a much bigger target than Apple. Um, and so Google security is really, really good. No one's breaking into Google. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm I just mean, worried. Don't get me going. There are, people are trying, and the, and the government. I mean, that's just it. It's like China's trying. I actually um, didn't mean other people breaking into Google. I meant Google using the data. <laughs> why I would mean. Google use your credit card number? I don't know. <laughs> Google's not going to use a credit card number to order stereo equipment to their house, you know. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So Larry Page has his own stereo. <laughs> so back to the passwords app, though. I think it's a really good thing. Anything that gets yes. more people having better yes. hygiene on passwords is a good thing. Absolutely. No, it's a it's a very good thing, and it's free, and it's it's pretty good. I mean, that's if you if you check out that article, I was like, you know, Apple has hit all the bases. Like, it's not as good as One Password or whatever. I mean, blah blah blah. There's all these other reasons why it's not quite as good, but it's totally fine. Like, yeah. you won't yeah. go wrong using it, no matter who you are. And mm -hmm. if you desperately want more, yes, you can always get One Password or Bitwarden or Dashlane or whatever. That's fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, is that it is now. You have to be this tall to play, and <laughs> Apple has met that has met this that height requirement. That's a really good description of it. All right, let's see what else was. Um, they talked about Control Center and being able to change uh, the Control Center icons to be tiles and change their size and add controls from other apps. And this was one of the points where I wrote yawn in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> was was this on anybody's bingo card? Is oh my gosh, my biggest problem is that control center is confusing, or I need no, to be able to control it more. I don't think so. I mean, it's uh, you know, I in my article, I, the head the heading was something like control center construction kit because it really <laughs> feels like, hey, look at all the things you can build. Um, <laughs> but and, you put it in your top you know, fourteen hey, most compelling hey kids. Hey kids, you could build. Yeah, no, I, it, it's it's kind of cool. And part of the reason why I put it in the top fourteen is I actually find Control Center a little annoying um, because, in fact, it's so not customizable. And so, um, you know, like every time I, I'm using my phone, if I can't pull it up, like every time I pull it up, I, you know, like there's the few things I use regularly, and then I have to look at all the others and like try to parse the icons and stuff like True. that. And so, if I have a little bit more. And, and there's a lot of them I don't use, so like I don't even know why they're there, and I can't take them away because they're they're default ones. So okay. if they make it entirely useful, and and like the whole thing with like bringing a media player and the home stuff, eh, you know, we'll see. I mean, well, home, home kit's already in there somehow. I don't know how it's chosen five, six icons to go in there from HomeKit for me, but I don't know how that happened. I don't think I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only yeah. on my phone, not on my Mac. Right. Yeah, and they, you notice they didn't say anything about Control Center on the Mac. So, yeah, I thought that's what um, they were talking about. So that that does explain something. I just want them to make something obvious to tell me how I get to Control Center versus look at every message you or every notification you just missed. Because I guess wrong 100% of the time. I click the wrong icon, oh, I get them backwards well, on the Mac. Oh, oh, do you just like, you just slam your cursor into the corner? Because that's how you get Notification Center. Slam it into the corner. What do you mean? No, you have to left, click. Upper right corner. You have to click on the no, clock. You don't. Yes, no, you I don't. Do. Well, you set something up, sweetie. Because I'm no, I'm doing no, it right maybe, now. Maybe I did. Two okay, different okay, screens. Maybe I did. It's probably a hot corner. Hot is what you did. Yeah, oh, it's probably a hot corner. Darn it. You know what? Maybe I should do a hot corner then, because I I click on try to get to Control Center, but I click on the clock and I get uh, notifications instead. Where do you suppose they put hot corners in this freaking system settings? No one knows. Oh, yeah. Weren't we supposed to get a big redesign of of uh, system settings? Wasn't that one yeah. of the big hot rumors? That's that's the that's the claim. So <laughs> hot corners. So hide home panel. I don't even know what that is. What's the, what's the home panel? No one knows. <laughs> <laughs> This is good. This it's is good radio. I get my notifications and I get widgets. We're doing this live. We, we, do, not, we do not have Come on, hot quarters? It's not called that? No, there's a thing called it hot It is. Course. You have to search on it. You have to search okay. on it. It's in, I, I found it from it's accessibility. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know where. It oh, it's in keyboard. Why would it be in keyboard? In keyboard? Yeah. Hot it's quarters. In keyboard? I'm not. Yeah. I'm getting it. Oh, that's shortcuts. No, that's in desktop and dock. <laughs> oh, wait. Desktop and dock. Desktop is where I get it. Yeah, that's how I have notifications set. Can I make con no? You can't do Control Center. Yeah, you can't. So how are you do? How are you doing that? Maybe you did uh, you run in one of those no, other things? Not, no, no. Notification Center is what does it. If I, well, if I if I slam into the upper corner, I get notifications plus plus uh, widgets. Okay, but how you got There's Notification no Center. Center to be in the upper right hand corner? I don't know. 
Oh, that's the if question. You go to, if you, okay, you search in system settings and hot corners. Okay. And then you go to hot corner shortcuts under desktop and dock. Oh, good. And you get the, the four pop-up under menus. Under desktop and dock. Okay, I see hot corners. I mean, I'm in hot corners and I see the four corners, but if I choose the four different right. options, none of them are control center. What are they? Hide show home panel? No, no. So that's something else. That's accessibility one. <laughs> You need hot corner shortcuts from desktop and dock. Or just go desktop oh, and dock and said. Then system settings. That's what said. <laughs> this is totally different. Oh my gosh. This is so they don't need to fix this at all. Okay. Mission control. That's what I want it to be. That's what we're uh, doing. Or, oh, you do it as notifications. notifications. No, I never I want notifications. notifications. I literally never I, am I, trying I, to get I, to that. I don't, I don't, I don't use any of this. Oh stuff, my gosh. So. It, 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 now it brings up spaces. Okay. <laughs> the only one I use for real is, is lower right corner for me is desktop. Okay. No, desktop so is so easy to hit. It's right out there in the open. I click on it and everything goes away. All right. What was the topic? <laughs> let's see. We, uh, let's see. Oh, let's talk about math notes. I am so excited about math notes. That is the best thing ever. It's going to be uh, so fun. So for anybody who doesn't remember, it's where you can write equations and it'll graph it for you and it'll solve them for you. I have to admit, I, I, am, I am enthusiastic for other people. <laughs> I, have, I cannot imagine having any use for this whatsoever. He's either got this bless your heart look on his face. Look, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like either do it like I can do my addition, like I'm doing addition in the calculator or I'm using a spreadsheet. Like I, there's no in between for me. Plus, I'm not an Apple Pencil person in the slightest. So, um, but that's because so like, you didn't have math notes. You know, because <laughs> I, I don't was, do math. I'm a word person. <laughs> I'm just, I was just working on a, a screencast online tutorial for about notability, and one of the cool things it can do. And I know this is really going to blow your dress up. You can write an equation, and in, in the tutorial, I, I write out the quadratic equation, and I invite everyone to sing along as I write, you know, negative B <laughs> plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A, all over 2A. Anyway, I write it out by hand, and then you can select it, and you can tell it to convert it to a real equation, and all of a sudden, it's printed as a real, like, typed equation. And if you click on it and you go into edit, it opens it up in a language called LaTeX, which is how it's creating oh. it. And it's, it's yep, yep. just, I mean... Just made my little heart sing. It was such a beautiful thing. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, as I said, I think this is going to be like high, my, my son was asking. He's a um, he's a PhD in machine learning. Um, mm -hmm. And he was asking if it would do college level math. And I'm like, I don't know. It'll do high school level math from what I could see. Um, I, so I just assumed it would be able to do. I mean, I don't know if it'll do Feynman equations, but uh, I would think it would do a you put know, it, put it this way, say, and such. Yeah, yeah. Tri well, as they, the level of math that Tristan does, um, you know, exceeded exceeded my high school calculus. Uh, <laughs> you know, somewhere around tenth grade, I think. So, <laughs> and nowadays, uh, he's like, as we know from linear algebra, I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> linear algebra. I have no idea what linear algebra. Is. That Sorry, actually, I'm a word person. That reminds me of when my son was in. Uh, God, how old? I think he was second. No later than fourth grade, but I think it was second grade. The uh, the teacher of his gifted program had found a bunch of books that were being thrown away from a library. So he got he took them all and he put them in the trunk of his car and he invited the kids to come take books out of the trunk. But he saved one for my son because he was pretty nerdy, and it was a non Euclidean geometry book, and he was required <laughs> to read some of it. So every night I would sit down with him in my lap, literally going, and then, do you know what Euclid figured out next? <laughs> it was like, I, I took a couple years of calculus in college and enjoyed it quite a bit. No idea what I was reading, but uh, anyway. <laughs> well, I'm excited about dra drawing uh, equations and stuff. I think that'll be, I think that'll be fun. I'm, I'm definitely known to... Uh, you know, whip open some uh, some math when I need to calculate the diagonal dimension of a, a or take the diagonal dimension of a screen and figure out what the two sides are. You know that kind of thing that comes up. <laughs> okay, how about okay? Since you're now, you said you're you're a word guy, but you're also not a pencil guy, so you also don't care about smart yeah. script improving handwriting. It just seems like I mean, like again, nice idea if you're a pencil user, but I just it's just so slow. I mean, I can type so much faster than I can handwrite. 
And, you know, no, and I mean, the advantage of this would be is my handwriting would actually be legible, which it's not now um, because I, I, I write so little that, of course, you're, it does sort of disintegrate um, over time because who cares? <laughs> well, when your hand cramps up, you can't write more than two or three oh, sentences yeah. before you can't do it. But l- let me make an argument for handwriting. And uh, I don't I'm guessing that you type faster than I do because this is what you do for a living. I type pretty fast, but I'm, I'm guessing you type faster than I do. But uh there's a time when you're not constructing sentences as much as you're trying to think. Like when you're trying to think, uh, or when I'm trying to think something out, uh, I do it in programming where I'm just trying to think out what is the, what are the the different components of this thing going to be? What are what are the 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 functions going to be, and what are the variables going to be in it? If I have to type that out in code, I have to be right. But I don't even want to be right yet. I just want to be structurally, what am I doing? This is going to go into that, and then this is going to call that thing over there. And so I, I, that's when I use notability, when I want to think. I'm trying to, I'm trying to plan something out. I draw a little picture of what I'm trying to do. And I find it really useful for that. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's good for that sort of thing. And um, I have discovered that I am weird. Um, and this baby just because <laughs> of flash. how old I am and how, how long I've been doing this. Um, I prefer full text. I literally, I mean, I don't, I don't do outlines. Really? Um, huh. I start at the beginning and I write to the, and I write to the end. Um, and hmm. I, I, I write as I go. And I, I mean, obviously we'll go back and polish and stuff like that, but it's very unusual for me to like move a section or move something around. Like I am, I am writing final text to start. Um, and so like the speed of typing actually is sort of an interesting one because in fact, I am, I'm not all that fast a typist in real world usage because I have to come up with the words to type. Like I'm, <laughs> okay. speed of typing is like when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're going from a printed page and you're typing it. I mean, that's, you know, how fast you type is, 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 is not the question. How fast I can think of what I want to say is the question. Okay. But as soon as I've thought of what can I say, I can slam it out. So basically you're, um, the other person who was like you is Nero Wolf. All of the uh, the the Nero Wolf books; those were all first drafts. Every one of his books yeah. was a first draft. So it's you Next and Nero Wolf. That's yep. it. Um, yeah. So I definitely I write like that when I write my articles for the for the podcast. I definitely do move sections around, but uh, all my blog posts are written from the beginning to the end. I often have to go back and go, well, that didn't make any sense how I got there, and I might have to rearrange something. But when I'm yeah. trying to learn or I'm trying to think something out. Like when I'm doing the screencasts uh, online videos, I always do a mind map because I'm, I'm, I'm poking all the buttons in a tool. I don't know it yet. Yeah. I don't already know what I want to say. So I'm poking it and I need to know, I need to splat ideas down and then rearrange them to where they tell a story. So I had to give a talk um, a couple of weeks ago at the ACES conference um, on generative AI uses. And so it was a little, it was unusual for me because I, I usually t- only talk about stuff that I really know well enough that I can just like talk extemporaneously. So did you like, bring Tristan f- um, with you for this one? <laughs> no, um, he corrected me mid midway too. So <laughs> and so he's like, no, you can't say that. That's not true anymore. I'm like, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, but it was interesting because I sort of started outlining and didn't work. I mean, like I, I had a very high level outline and then to go anymore, I was like, I actually need to write down what I'm going to say. Mm. And that was how I think about it. And, and this made me really quite worried, right? Because when I'm practicing um, beforehand in the hotel room, it's not going very well. Um, because like, I'm not exactly remembering what I had written or whatever. And what I what happened as soon as I got up there was, I remembered that I'm actually a very good extemporaneous speaker. So and don't so, try to regurgitate what you'd written down. So I did. I didn't need to. That, mm-hmm. that as soon as I was up there and I, I was talking to to people and could, could engage their reactions and figure out, it all just flowed naturally, and you know the jokes happened and all that. <laughs> Whereas uh, when I was trying to write it out, like I needed to do that as the way my thinking my thinking works, but I didn't actually have to say those words. Interesting. Um, Interesting. That I could perform. I could perform the part. But my thinking needs to, I need to think in full text. I don't, I just can't think in outline. You know, I think I know what you're talking about there. When uh, I first started doing the podcast and I started, and I was writing these blog posts with everything I was going to say, people said, well, you know, you're wasting a lot of time. You should just do an outline and, and do that. And what I found was I would write full text and then erase it to make it a bullet point. 
was like, well, wait a minute. I could keep it as full text, and then people who didn't want to listen to me and just wanted to read what I had to say would be able to read it. And uh, that's yeah, that's yeah. where one of my favorite jokes is. People said used to tell me, "Why do you why do you give it to them in a blog post? Then they're not going to listen." I said, "Wow, that'd be terrible if they got the content the way they wanted it, wouldn't it?" You're right. <laughs> I should stop doing that. <laughs> just awful, right? <laughs> Cannibalizing my product. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so well, yeah. So any of it? No. I, I again, I I do feel as though the Apple Pencil and the iPad, they are not tools for me. But and I think there are a bunch of people who are having trouble figuring out what they want to do with the iPad. Um, you know that right now yeah. I'm seeing a lot of complaints, like particularly like the iPad Pro hardware. Oh my gosh, this is amazing! But iPad OS is still bumming me out. Yeah, I don't want to go you down know? that road. I'm so tired yeah. of everybody whinging on that topic. It just, <laughs> I love my <laughs> iPad. I use it for all kinds of things. It's great. Leave me alone. I, let me be happy. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that it's just but that but that's just it is is that once you find those things, then it's great. And that's what I think the math notes and smart script will really help with that. It would be nice if they did a little bit more of the, you know, other stuff people want. Sure. But nonetheless, you know, those are for the for like the students, again, those are student features. Yeah. Those like if you're a student, oh like cats, that's great. Well, yeah, or, or people who do math in real life. <laughs> Who would that be? That's... <laughs> no, I mean the thing. The thing with math notes, what I think is really interesting about it, and is is that it feels like it's in between what I do, which is you know simple calculator stuff and spreadsheets. Mm-hmm. Like anything I'm going to do that, like it's very unusual for me to do something that doesn't either isn't just over and done because it's a calculation I need to do once, or it's something where I need to put in different bits of data and play with the data or, you know, it's a fair amount of data and things like that. And then it's a spreadsheet. So this is a nice in-between in chunk. Yeah, I think so. Hey, I wanted to ask you, one of your 14 compelling items was entitled Safari Highlights and Reader Summaries. <laughs> I did not understand what this one even was. It, tell me, what what was that? Yeah, this is, feels a little funny to me. So, okay, so Safari Highlights are, you're going to a hotel. Um, you're on a trip and you need to go to, you know, you're trying to figure out the ho- where the hotel is. So you need to figure out what the address of the hotel is so you can get directions there once you've landed in the airport. Um, so you go to the hotel's page and you're like, where do they, where have they put the damn address? It's you know, always like, at the bottom, I, right? It, it's at the bottom, but like is it on the bottom of this page. Do I have to go to a, do I have to find a contact page? Do they have an actual directions page? The idea behind highlights is there's a certain number of things that people apparently do when directions is a big one, where it, it will just, um, the Apple intelligence feature will just go and find this, you know, it'll sort through all the content on the page, go, oh, there's a, there's a address there. So I'm going to make, I'm going to give him, give, give him a button where he can click to get directions because he's in the airport now. So huh. that's one of them. The others were funny things like, I don't, and they didn't give a demo of this. So I can't quite visualize it. Is like you could look up like, what movies an actor had been in. So if there's an act, I, I, I don't quite, I don't quite get this. Like, is it, how does it know that you're doing this? Unless it's you know, a page about the actor or something. But yeah. that was, that was kind of where they were going with that. So mm-hmm. it feels a little bit to like, like beefed up data detectors. Okay. You know, we, we've, we've, we've detected some kind of data on this and we're going to tell you more about it. If you click here. Okay, but so, it wouldn't do anything if it went to tidbits.com or podfeed.com because we don't have addresses. Cool. Or and, and presumably we're not famous enough to be an IMDb. People. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, th- I think you so, could have made 13 compelling things, not 14 yeah. on that one. <laughs> so, so what I think is actually, I mean, somewhat more interesting about this actually is the Safari Reader stuff. Okay. Um, and, and so that's where basically you send something to reader and let's face it, you're only going to send something to reader if it's big, right? Or if you know, the ads are too it. annoying on the page. Well, that's true. That's, that's what that's I use it for. Another one. I, yeah. I let their ad um, runs and if they annoy me too much, I hit the reader button. That's their penalty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Penalty box. Damn. You're out. <laughs> um, and so, so with long stuff that you send um, to reader, you know, this is, it's what's sort of funny about this is, this feels more like a businessy feature, right? You know, like, oh, I need to, you know, go over this long document kind of thing that I found on the web. Um, and so 
you, that's where you'll be able to use the, the Apple intelligence stuff to summarize it, pull out key points, give me a, a table of contents okay. so that I can click to different parts of this huge document, okay. things like that. So that okay, felt more interesting Safari. to me. Uh, yeah, it does. Right. It does. Uh, my friend, Dr. Marianne Gary is always sending me these like 35 page you know, research papers that she wants me to discuss with her. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I can read a little longer than a tweet, you know, before I get bored and I move on. I mean, I read your stuff, uh, but uh, it's, if it's more than like three paragraphs, I might have to do it in five settings. So to be able to have a summary like that, that's just right there, that would be, that would be terrific. Right. And so, I mean, this is again, one of those generative AI features, which on the one hand, yeah, it feels like Cliff's notes. Like it feels like you're cheating. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, you know, it depends whether you actually need to read this. The reason why Cliff's notes was cheating was because you were missing the entire point of it being this classic work of fiction, say. Right. Uh, as opposed to I, when I wrote about this, uh, my generative AI article is like, you know, I actually got a federal government document that I was supposed to look at. And it was, I don't know, 74 pages of federal government document speak. And it was very much the kill me now, you know, like I, <laughs> I, I, I cannot do this. And so in that case, I was using a service called chat PDF, which allows you to converse with the document. You can ask questions oh, of the document wow. um, and answers, and it, you know, it gives you the answer and then it gives you a link to the page, which shows it. So I'm hoping some of the summarization and whatnot features that Apple's providing will work a little along those lines where you can just say, this is just way too dense and I don't care enough. Like I care enough to like tell me the summary or, you know, bounce me around in the document a little bit, but I do not care enough to read this document. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just downloaded the uh, user manual for my new color laser printer from Brother. And it, I'm not joking, it's 378 pages long. And that's only one language. It's not like French is in there too. It was one language. It's so a I'm gonna, printer. I, it's a printer. Yeah. Well, it, they do have an interactive uh, uh, user manual online, so you can just you know poke into the piece you want. But this is this thing is big. I think I'm going to try it with this chatpdf.com. I'm going to throw it in there and yeah. say, you know, what is that second printer tray for? The second second paper tray. <laughs> I haven't figured out what that yeah. thing's for. What is that? Yeah. Yeah, totally. The uh, I, the funniest manual I've seen recently is I bought a um, a Bluetooth barcode scanner um, for scanning QR codes um, okay. on race bib numbers at races. Okay. And um, the way you configure this thing entirely when you get its manual, its manual is like 100 pages of QR codes. Oh, really? Because everything you do in this is involves scanning a QR code with the device and the special QR codes can actually change settings in the device. I thought that was just really That's funny. It's kind of clever, kind of <laughs> meta. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, well, okay, I guess that makes sense, but wow, weird. Well, probably the most fun thing is the uh, tap backs being expanded to any yes. emoji and Genmoji. And I got confused on where Genmoji ends up in the plot and where tap backs are. Are they intermingled? Okay. Right. So, well, so a uh, little bit of a, a good question. Um, so, tap backs to begin with. Um, right now, there are these little monochrome, you know, there's five of them, plus, you know, thumb up, thumb down, mm -hmm. heart, uh, ha ha, exclamation Excellent. points and question mark. Um, and so they'll be color and nicer looking for one. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll be able to use any emoji you want of the existing, you know, thousand emoji, mm -hmm. um, which is that's, I mean, I think that's that's cool and useful. Um, and then Apple said you'd be able to use Genmoji, and I can't quite visualize how that's going to work. I mean, you know, when you create a Genmoji, how does it keep it around for you? Well, they said you can make like it a sticker. Just, oh, yeah, stickers is the other ones, but, but Genmoji but, are different than stickers. So I think and a Genmoji so, can be a sticker, is what I thought. I don't really understand stickers, Let me honestly. check my notes and notability and listen to what they said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm too old for stickers. No, stickers. I'm are not 12 anymore, seven anymore. <laughs> stickers are stupid because you can send a sticker, but the other person can't take the sticker and then use it for anything. It's one way. It's it's just, it is literally like it's stuck down with really good glue on your message. So it doesn't do anything. I, it doesn't so, the, do much. so I like, I like the idea of the Genmoji actually quite a lot. Um, and, and I actually. But repeat again I, what I Genmoji are. Is. Okay, are? so Genmoji are uh, generative emoji, where you say, I want emoji, an emoji of a penguin riding a surfboard. 
Okay, there is not an emoji of a penguin riding a surfboard. There, there might be, be a penguin, there might be a surfboard, but there clearly needs to be a penguin riding a surfboard. Right. Um, and uh, all my emoji, Gen emoji are going to have penguins in them, just saying. <laughs> um, so, so you can just create that with a text prompt. And, and this is what I, you know, like Apple didn't show enough to know exactly what the interface is going to look like. But then you've got this Gen emoji of a penguin riding a surfboard that you can use in tapbacks or in normal, normal in normal text or anything else. And I think there's going to be some real devils in the details with these things because, for instance, emoji, each platform has its own imagery for emoji. So what the, you know, what you see when you put a, you know, a Christmas tree um, or, a, you know, a, an apple. A hamburger. Um, I remember there was the order of the cheese and the tomato it was a big kerfuffle between right, the different companies. You know, Android, right? Android has a different, a different um, graphic for that. I mean, it'll still look like a hamburger or a Christmas tree or whatever, right. but it's not going to look the same. So, so you know, but what they're doing is they're the 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 emojis are ending up with Unicode characters, um, right. and so they're that's why they can be agreed upon. I have no Gen emoji are going to probably just be graphics, as far as I can imagine. So I don't, you know, I don't quite know how that will work across platforms or what happens if you put them in a web page. You know, oh, yeah. Just, just, yeah. just don't know. I mean, I mean, is it is it just going to be an image or is? But it if it's just an image, somehow? how is it emoji? It shouldn't get the emoji part. Precisely, um, and they actually have other. I mean, you know, the emojis just like are they maybe maybe they're emoji because they're just small. I mean, I don't really do the meme emoji or the an emoji either. So um, uh, the gen emoji, I'm the most interested in of all the emojis. So. I, I think I think it's probably been three years since I did an, an emoji me emoji. I, I not against it or anything, but I don't actually do it. <laughs> I have no, I have no, yeah. So, uh, but I do think actually, so bear with me a little bit because I haven't actually thought all this through, but I, I'm, I'm somewhat perturbed by emoji because they have meaning, but they do not have shared meaning a lot of the time. So at this point, we all know what an eggplant emoji means. I don't make me say that. But, okay. <laughs> I've heard that I'm supposed to know, but I'm old. <laughs> You're supposed to. Okay. Yeah, I'm old and I know. So any event, the point being, don't just be sprinkling the, the eggplant emojis around. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Good to know. But, 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 but all the, I mean, most emojis, like, what does it mean if it's the, you know, emoji with one eye winking and the tongue out? Does that mean something different than if it's just um, winking and it doesn't have a tongue out? You know, like, uh, I don't know. Um, and so, and, and I believe that, the, you know, some of these things, you know, do again in certain communities have very specific meanings, but that meaning is, is, is not easily transmitted. And so what I kind of like about the gen emoji is it eliminates that belief that, oh, you should know what this means. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Um, so like if it's a penguin riding a surfboard, it's just a penguin. You know, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. <laughs> so uh, um, I do like and, that. And so we may be in a situation where like we can stop taking the emoji, having these emoji laden with meaning by some people a little less seriously. Maybe um, maybe the uh, the emoji super council or whatever they're called has just been Sherlocked that we don't need them. Like when we're trying to get the penguin on the surfboard approved, now we can just make our own. Maybe we don't need all those approved ones. We don't, and and I and I'm I'm tremendously offended by the whole uh, by the fact that you know they come up with like I don't know thirty a year or something. <laughs> like, why did you think you need that one and not a penguin on a surfboard? You know, like I would use a penguin on a surfboard regularly. I couldn't care less about a pineapple, you know, or whatever. I mean, it's just so freaking arbitrary. I was actually you know? thinking the penguin should be holding a, a pineapple. I was about to say it earlier, and I didn't say it. I said that's what it, I would. I would <laughs> have mine to be that holding way. a pineapple. Exactly. I mean, you can you can do that. Yeah. So I'd so like to, I'd just, like to have a, like, a, a, a microphone on their discussions of arguing about whether or not the penguin on the surfboard is is considered a viable candidate or not. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole thing, it just doesn't make any sense to me, you know, like why, 
one would be chosen over another. You know, again, how could they possibly decide? Oh, well, people, you know, like people have, tr- you know, like in Slack, I do the colon and then you start typing out the name of the thing. Yeah. And I'm constantly disappointed there isn't an emoji for such and such. Because yeah. like, I don't know. I mean, I have no clue what emoji might there might be. So <laughs> I'm amazed by the people who can just pull them out. And they're, it's like, well, I have to sit there and, you know, hit the globe and then search for the thing I want and hope I get the right word. I'm looking at this giant grid. I'm scrolling through and all I wanted was a thumbs up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you're going to love the uh, Genmoji then because you're going you're gonna to make the, uh, you know, Allison's thumbs up, which is going to be different in some way. And, uh, and, you know, and that one will just be saved for you. So, exactly. You know. <laughs> exactly. I, uh, when I'm not big on animated GIFs, but I, t- I had a uh, little uh, live photo of my granddaughter. She was jumping up and down as I took the picture. And I realized that'd be a really funny uh, loop video. And so I made it one and then I realized it works as a GIF. So I used it once. And if I use it often enough, it's always at the top of my list. So instead of writing yay, I keep sending that little video. (laughs) So yeah, I'll be doing my own thumbs up. That's for sure. Well, I wanted to do one more on the list, and that was about call recording and transcription. And I entirely missed this in, if this was in the keynote, I didn't see it, didn't hear it. So maybe- One sentence. Really? One sentence. I'm telling you, super, super fast. Okay. So is this part of the Apple intelligence stuff or is this? Okay. So this comes, this is, it was, it was talked about in when they were talking about notes, being able to record audio and and transcribe it live. Mm. And, and then there's just, there's one sentence basically that says, and you'll be able to do this for phone calls. Um, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll be alerting both, you know, participants when it's turned on. So everyone knows what's happening, kind of something along those lines. That's all they said. Okay. Um, but so, so you won't be able to surreptitiously record. Um, it's not quite clear how they'll be alerting, but you know, we'll see. I mean, be like, presumably it would have to be audio because you can't be sure that you're talking to someone on a cell phone, um, with a screen, you know, so, and. How would you how would you pop up a notification on a different platform anyway? So presumably some audio thing will will go. You know, Allison is recording. Um. <laughs> right, right. It, my uh, so two th- two things on this. Um, I read an article in Neiman Lab uh, Neiman Lab dot org, and I'll put a link to the show notes in the show notes to this. Is uh, evidently this is going to be the bomb for um, uh, reporters where they call somebody on the phone and what they do right now is they uh, uh, can record, but then they use something like otter.ai to transcribe it or they yeah. use a service called tape a call mm-hmm. apparently. And uh, otter.ai just reduced the number of calls you can record uh, to t- or transcribe, I should say, to 10. And that's for 120 bucks a year. And then uh, tape a call just increased the rates from $10 a month to $70 a month, like just cool. now. So wow. this this article has all these screenshots of reporters <laughs> basically saying pound sand tape a call, you know, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. And uh, <laughs> so that was really interesting that reporters need this. I'm going to use it every time I'm on a support call. You know how it always starts with <laughs> this call may be requ- uh, recorded for customer quality assurance. And I'm going to hit my button <laughs> right when I hear that. And I'm going to do it on Apple Care in particular, because some of the absurd <laughs> things they've said before, I'm going to say, well, you record me, I can record you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, the the, the thing that, um, uh, you know, I, not so much phone calls, but, you know, that I've wanted to record a lot of times are doctor's visits. Because they won't let doctors, you. They are not happy about that. I've heard. I've, um, I've specifically boy, like, asked, and they've said no. You are not allowed to record me. It's like, well, you talk a mile a minute, and I can't take notes fast enough. Right, precisely, and I have to pay attention to you. And yeah, so I'm. I that's what I, that's what I want to record um, because because yeah, there's always a lot of details, and you're like. Was it twice a day or or once a day that I'm supposed to do this? You know, like yeah. or you know, it's three sets of fifteen or was it three sets of ten? Uh, you know, I don't remember. Um, yeah, so, I've got an eye doctor so who, I, yeah. who talks to the a person in the room who takes notes, and he just spits out all this jargon that I don't know what any of the words are. But I've got a friend who's an ophthalmologist, and I would love to have all of those words and take it to her and say, "What did he say?" And then he'll turn around to me and go, "Oh, everything's fine." <laughs> wait, wait, wait. you just said the three turned to a two was that good or bad 
Yeah, right. So, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's an interesting problem. Um, and this is one of the things that um, I'm starting to play with in my head a little bit, which is AI in general is allowing us to instantiate what's in our heads for better and worse. What do you I mean, mean by instantiate this is where you're getting, in that case? Well, so this is, I mean, what do you think most people are generating images of? <laughs> Um, <laughs> eggplants. Clearly, you're, you're eggplants. a dirty boy. That never occurred to me. It literally <laughs> oh, never. Oh goodness! Occurred. Really? <laughs> Seriously? Okay. <laughs> no, no. I've been this... out there. I've been trying to get a get a, get. A, Steve and I have both been trying to get one of the um, generative uh, drawing modules to take uh, Grogu and and put a, a helmet on him, like so his ears are inside the helmet. And we can't get, oh, and he needs to be riding a horse when he's doing it. That's what, what we've been trying to who's do. Gro, who's Grogu? Uh, the, uh, t- baby Yoda, to offend oh, everybody. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so any event, the point being, I mean, like, because there's there's actually a bunch of ba- a bunch of seriously bad stuff going on with AI-generated child uh, sexual abuse materials. Oh, um, yeah, it's it's an ugly, ugly scenario. And, and so, but the point being that, you know, like one of the things that people are using AI for is to get what's in their head out. Hmm. Um, and in some ways recording, you know, recording what goes on around you so that you can revisit it is another, another way of doing that. It's instantiating something that was previously ephemeral. Yeah. And so, so the, and, and, and it's interesting that doctors don't want to do it, presumably because they are afraid they could be sued for malpractice and this would be held against them. Yep. Um, yeah. But 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 again, in some sense, this is these are your thoughts. Once they've been once they've been told to you, it's in your head, right? You remember right. this stuff. So shouldn't you be able to to spit this out? Well, of course you can. You can write down everything you say, but everything you remember. But somehow it's not okay for you to record them, so you don't have to. It doesn't have to go through your head first, <laughs> right? Yeah. Just saying, there's there's some interesting stuff going on here, and that, that changes once you can do this. And this is not. I mean, the whole Microsoft recall is is you know another aspect of this where people are like, "Ooh, privacy, privacy, privacy." But part of that's because you don't want other people to see what you're instantiating in your head, right? You know, yeah. you know and, yeah. and so they're worried about the fact that this could be hacked or whatever. There and was, so I, there's just a terrific Black Mirror episode uh, about this where uh, people had the ability to record everything going on around them at all times. And where it came into play was a husband and wife having arguments. And it was... It was just horrible. It was like it's exactly what I want, and it is exactly what I should never have. You know, it was just <laughs> I said, and I quote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no, you said, and you I did. quote. Yeah, eventually she figures out that he's having an affair with somebody because of the way he said something had a recording of something else and was able to pull all the dots together, but only because this record of every single thing ever said between them was there. And uh, yeah, so it's a bad thing. <laughs> Yeah. And so, but again, it's in your head. You just don't know if you remembered it exactly. So again, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, we I, don't I remember anything correctly. Issues. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, and it is clear that people have, you know, some people obviously are obviously people photographing them, just, you know, people just have very widely varying abilities to remember stuff. So I've mentioned so, Dr. Mary Ann Gary uh, earlier in the conversation. She's been on Chit Chat yeah, Across the Pond. name dropping her regularly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, she's probably, uh, I think she's been on Chit Chat Across the Pond more than anybody but Bart. And uh, she's a, oh, uh, she wow. studies memory uh, out of the University of Waikato in New Zealand. And basically what she has taught us is everything you think you remember, you're wrong. And yeah. sh- she can induce memories in people. Uh, she can take a class of like 30 uh, grad students. She experiments on grad students all the time. She can get more than half of them inside of a couple of weeks to tell a story about their childhood that simply never occurred. So <laughs> everything you think yep. you know about your memory, you're wrong. If you have siblings and you're always arguing about well, how something happened in your childhood, not only are you wrong, they're wrong. Everybody's wrong. Nobody's remembering <laughs> it correctly. <laughs> I, I'm listening to this fabulous podcast called A History of Rock Music and 500 Songs, which I, I recommend super highly. But but he's he often will get into the point where, like, there's been books written by all the members of a band, and they all disagree about some key point. <laughs> because, they yeah, they don't, they might have different agendas, et cetera, et cetera, but they also just don't remember 
um, what happened, you know, four years ago when they were all 20 and stoned out of their minds and in a recording session. Exactly. I was going to say, yeah, the drugs really helped with that plot line, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I think we have uh, given this all a flavor that possibly nobody else has given to the uh, to WWDC (laughs) and the importance of each of these attributes in our in our clear and linear thinking method, strictly following our agenda. Right, Adam? Oh, absolutely. I only write linearly. I don't think linearly. (laughs) That's why I have to write it that way. All right. Well, uh, uh, if for the two people who don't know who Adam Angst is and Tidbits, you want to tell them how they can find you? <laughs> Indeed. Tidbits, uh, weekly newsletter, um, though we put stuff up on the web throughout the week and then collect it into email at the end of the week or beginning of the week uh, at tidbits.com. Covers all things Apple um, that I find interesting. Very good. Thanks all for coming. <laughs> and lots Adam. of things and, and, and stuff that I don't find interesting just gets left out. I don't know. You put math notes in your notes there. <laughs> I find it interesting for other people. <laughs> I can put myself in other people's shoes sometimes. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming back on the show, Adam. I'm glad to be here. Can you tell that I just love talking to Adam? I could talk to him all day. I mean, I, I had to cut us off on that, but we had such a great time. I always say, I got to get him back on more often, and I really need to do that. But that's going to wind us up for this week. Hey, don't forget to send in your thousandth episode recordings to Steve by June 23rd. You don't have much more time here. And you can do that by emailing them to him at steve at podfeed.com. He's got quite a few uh, submissions so far, and uh, and it's going really well. He's having all kinds of fun not, not uh, playing them for me. But uh, definitely send those in by June 23rd to steve at podfeed.com. Speaking of emailing people, did you know you can email me at allison at podfeet.com anytime you like? If you have a question or a suggestion, just send it on over. We've got some big vacations coming up so we can use some reviews. So if you just start thinking about it now, it's not urgent yet, but we need to, we're going to be needing some reviews this summer for pretty much most of August. All right, remember, everything good starts with podfeet.com. You can follow me on Mastodon, podfeet.com slash Mastodon. Want to listen to the uh, podcast on YouTube? just go to podfeed.com slash YouTube. If you want to join the conversation, you can join our Slack community at podfeed.com slash Slack, where you can talk to me and all of the other lovely, you know, silly castaways, like uh, physics nerd Graham was in there. You can support the show at podfeed.com slash Patreon or with a one-time donation, podfeed.com slash PayPal, like John Murray does, except he just does it over and over and over again. And if you want to join in the fun of the live show, head on over to podfeet.com slash live on Sunday nights at 5 p.m. Pacific time and join the friendly and enthusiastic Nocilla Castaways. Thanks for listening and stay subscribed. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, especially Steve. <laughs> <laughs>